everyone. I'm Zara. Happy Monday. Go ahead and hit that share button and remember to show love by liking or loving this video. Hi. How was you guys' this weekend? My weekend was so busy. So Saturday I went car shopping with I went car shopping with my mom. Her having five kids has prompted her to get a van. So yes, she's becoming a minivan driver. Does any of you guys drive minivans or your parents drive minivans? On Sunday, I spent the day all by myself, well, with my mom all by myself. I was helping her organize one of her clients' houses. My mom, she's a professional organizer. She actually organized this back here. And the most interesting thing is she color-coded it. Like, she's amazing. But make sure you follow her, organize underscore design underscore create. And she can hook you up. Mm -hmm. So make sure you follow her on her Instagram and her Facebook. So, okay. Let's dive in. But today I will be reading Angus All Aglow by Heather Smith. Angus likes sparkly things. The rainbow sequins on his sister's tutu, the sun's reflection on Baker Lake in summer, the diamond studs on the collar of his dog, Sherlock. Angus likes sparkly words too. Lustrous rolled off his tongue. Scintillating made his eyebrows dance. Just saying the word gleaming made his mouth smile. Glistening was his favorite because hidden and glistening is listening. And Angus all liked sparkly things so much he felt as though he could hear them. The nighttime stars crackled like a campfire. The metal taps on his sister's dance shoes whiz bang popped like fireworks. His sapphire studded scissors sizzled like frying bacon. Angus's favorite sparkly thing was all of all was Grandma June's necklace. It had five strands of colorful glass beads that sounded like popcorn being popped in a metal pot. One d in a metal pot. One day, Grandma June noticed Angus admiring her necklace. She slipped it over his head. It's all yours, she said. Angus felt a twinkly deep inside his belly. It was his inner sparkle, fizzy and warm. Angus glowed from the inside out. The next morning, Angus decided to wear Grandma June's necklace to school. His sister said, Angus, that necklace doesn't really match the rest of your outfit. Why don't you wear a scarf instead? Angus said, scarves don't sparkle. His father said, why don't you save that necklace for a special, special occasion like Mardi Gras? Angus said, why can't every day be Mardi, Mardi Gras? His mother said, Angus, the thing is that necklace is really bright, Angus said. That's the point. Heads turned as Angus walked into his classroom. Could they hear the popping too? Johnny Cole put his face and yelled out, My eyes, my eyes. Others joined in, Too bright, too bright. Brett Andrew said, Sparkles, Angus. Sparkles. The 
his classmates' laughter was like a downpour of freezing rain. Angus ran away into the hallway where his inner sparkle f fizzled like a wet firecracker. He tried to pull the necklace over his head, but the strands twisted together. A thick loop got caught on his ear. Angus yanked hard. The glass beads seemed to lose their color as they bounced off the floor. The only sound Angus could hear was a shower of sad plinkety plink. Justin Melody Daniels appeared. As she stepped into the hallway, her foot bumped a lone bead. He rolled toward Angus. It seemed to move in slow motion. Angus and Melody followed it with their eyes. They watched it as it rolled to a wibbly wobbly stop against the rubber sole of Angus's sneaker. Angus frowned and kicked the bead away, then turning his back on Melody. He walked back into the classroom. That night, Angus went to his sister's dance recital. Tap shoes glimmered and sequins shimmered, but Angus didn't wear a whiz, a bang, or a pop. At bedtime, Sherlock snuggled in clothes, but the diamond studs on his collar jabbed and poked. Angus pushed Sherlock away. The next morning, under the maple, the red maple tree, Melody was waiting for Angus. In her hand was a brown paper bag. She reached in and scooped out a handful of beads. It was a pretty necklace, she said. It looked like a party on a string. She brought the beads to her ear. Sounds like popping candy, you know, the kind that fizzes in your mouth. Suddenly, the world around Angus exploded with sound. The beads in Melody's hands, crick, crack, popped like hot corn kernels. The ruby buttons on her cardigan buzzed like a bazillion fireflies. The rainbow ribbons in her hair cling, ching, clang, rang like a parade. The two friends sat together admiring the beads while she leaves, while the leaves of the red maple sizzled above them. Melody pulled a ribbon from her hair. Maybe you can make a ne new necklace. Angus had a better idea. With his sapphire studded scissors, he snipped the ribbon into two threads and beaded onto each piece. He struggled to tie the ends. I can help, said Melody. Together they meet. They made two new bracelets. Angus passed one to Melody. It's all yours. Melody beamed. Angus clutched the second bracelet in his hand. His fingers tingled as the beads hummed in with hump happiness. But underneath the thrum, 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 Angus could hear a dark whisper. My eyes, my eyes, too bright, too bright. His inner sparkle quivered like a flickering flame. Melody reached out and touched the bracelet. It matches your outfit perfectly, she said. The dark whisper disappeared like a wisp of smoke on the breeze. Angus slipped the bracelet over his hand. The beads zizzle, zazzle, zap. The lightning in a stormy sky. Every head turned as Angus and Melody walked into the classroom. Angus glowed from the inside out. that's the end well thank you guys for watching thank you guys for joining make sure you check out our website and make sure you guys donate to help us raise money and raise books for ghana and we'll see you guys next time bye